Hey guys, Telegram Sam here. If you don't already know, I have an Instagram. It's Telegram underscore Sam underscore Vinyl. So if you're on Instagram, check me out on there. But um, this week's video, we're just doing another installment of five songs I am currently obsessed with. This is where I uh, pick some records from my collection and play you some songs from those records and talk about them, why I think I'm obsessed with them, whatever I feel like talking about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is a very rock heavy um, edition. I feel like the last two I've done have been like pretty diverse, but I feel like this one's just a lot of rock. So sorry if you came here for the diversity. <laughs> um, I try to do my best, but I want to stay faithful to what I'm like actually obsessed with and what I'm listening to. Um, but yeah, I've just been through a really big like rock, power pop, hard rock phase currently, so that's what most of this is. <laughs> Alright, let's start off with the first song, which is actually probably the most like folky, less heavy song in the bunch. Uh, pretty popular song, some of you might know it, it's from a pretty big band. But this first song is 13 by Big Star. Uh, this was the fourth song off of this album called Number One Record, um, written by Alex Chilton and Chris Bell. And I feel like the song perfectly encompasses what it's like to be an adolescent. Um, I don't know. Talking about like going to the pool, having crushes, you know, uh, how parents suck, you know, the usual adolescence angst. But yeah, this is such an innovative album in general for power pop. I mean, Big Star really sort of honed in on what power pop was supposed to be. Um, but I feel like this is such a beautiful, nice, like, ballad. And I feel like Alex Chilton and um, Chris Bell were just one of those writing duos. It's like Lennon McCartney, Richards, and Mick Jagger. It's like they were just one of those those two people that just got together that were at the right place, the right time, and just created this amazing music. And uh, yeah, this is a number one record to have in any collection. And the song, I feel like, just really sells it. They also famously did um, uh, the original version of that 70s show song. That's how I heard about Big Star. Uh, Cheap Trick did that cover that was part of the show. Um, but that's how I heard Big Star without realizing that it was Big Star. I just thought it was a cheap trick, cheap trick song. Um, sorry, and you get my bad suit in these videos. Um, yeah, I just love this song. It's so simple, so perfect. The lyrics. Um, even though, you know, I grew up being a teenager in the 2010s and, you know, he's referencing the 60s, uh, that feeling is still the same. Um, but yeah, such a great song. Uh, really can't go wrong with anything from Big Star, really. Alright, next up we have... Uh, one of my uh, all-time favorite artists ever. It was probably just a matter of time before and I ended up showing something from him. Uh, this one comes on cool green vinyl. What side are you on? So if you're a long-time watcher of my videos, you know I'm a massive fan of Iggy Pop, the Stooges, just like anything Iggy Pop has been a part of. Um, so of course I have to choose something from him to play. Um, this is The Endless Sea by Iggy Pop. Mm -hmm. 
It's funny because it's actually been a while since I really sit down and listen to this album and I forgot how great of an album this is. You know, when you think of Iggy Pop's solo career, you think of The Idiot, Lust for Life, but this one kind of goes uh, under the radar and uh, it's just perfect. Um, this is the sixth track off of his album, New Values, written by Iggy Pop. Um, I sort of believe, I mean, it's almost like proggy in a way. It's like this new wave, sort of alternative prog. <laughs> I feel like I've, this is like a song like you really wouldn't imagine Iggy Pop doing, but it suits him so well. James Williamson produced this album. believe like when I looked into the lyrics that it's sort of commentary about how shitty the state of the world and life is and sort of saying how he wants to go into the endless sea and be cleansed of all the bad that's in the world um, which I definitely vibe with especially in these current times um, it's very relatable I feel like everyone kind of goes through those feelings What's going on? Why, why is this stuff happening? And Maggie, turn on the <laughs> Maggie wants to, she's like, where are you doing? I want to be a part of this. You just get to see her tail. Like that keyboard work. So yeah, Scott Thurston uh, does the keyboards and synthesizer on this album. I just love it. Oh, this a dirty sky. Full of furies and liquors. Check out this album, just this album in general is amazing, and the song is a gem off of this album, one of many. Um, I think this is a music on vinyl reissue that was limited to 5,000 or something like that. Really dope. I love it. And this one a little bit early. But yeah, y'all knew it was a matter of time before I played something that was like a pop or Stooges related. Probably won't be the only thing I ever play. I mean, if I could have it my way, I would just only play the Stooges and Iggy Pop stuff. All right, next up we have just such an anthem. This was such a important song for me as a teenager, getting into rock music. And, you know, it's a very, it's very much a sausage fest, especially early rock. I mean, it still is now, but early rock was very just so many men. <laughs> and a lot of women got shafted, and um, Susie Quattro is a great example of that. Her and her sister just were in multiple bands together, but um, essentially um, they were in an amazing band called Cradle, which was her, Susie Quattro, um, and three of her other sisters. Her other sister Patty ended up being the drummer for Fanny, which is considered one of the greatest, um, or the first uh, hard rock all-female uh, band ever. And um, 
the only reason they wanted to sign Susie Quattro from Cradle was because she was the better looking one, which is so fucking ridiculous. Um, but I love Susie Quattro. She was such a huge inspiration to me when I was getting into rock music and I was like, I want to hear some women doing rock music. And, uh, yeah, this was one of those songs that I just fell in love with and made me fall in love with Susie Quattro. Quattro. This is the fourth track off of her album Quattro. Uh, funny thing, the OG Quattros, which I have, have a version of the Wild One Not, but it's this weird slow version. And for some reason, uh, this version wasn't added until they did later reissues of it. And also in the UK and Canada, they got this version don't know why the US version had a weird slow version, uh, but this is a, like a greatest hits album I think from Germany, but um, this has the rock version on it that my OG Quattro album was missing. Uh, but fourth track off the album Quattro, written by Mike Chapman and Nikki Chin, who wrote, who wrote uh, a lot of songs for Susie and also the band Sweet and a lot of other sort of uh, hard rock, glam rock artists in the 70s and um yeah it's just such a badass like rock and roll uh chick anthem i just love it and i remember w watching the runaways movie with joan jett and dakota fanning in it and this is the opening song to that movie and i just instantly fell in love with it and um Susie Quattro was like a huge influence on Joan Jett. Um, that's what made Joan Jett want to like play guitar and be in a rock band and uh, such a huge inspiration. And for some reason she never really got the big commercial success in America. She was kind of more popular overseas and in foreign markets. Um, in America she was only really known as being like the Fonz's girlfriend on Happy Days for a few episodes and that was kind of it. Unless you're like into this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, such a trailblazer. Uh, you should definitely look up her story. It's just amazing coming from a, an entire family of badass women who just wanted to play music and kept the wrong game shunned by corporations because there was no female rock bands and no one wanted to take the chance on um, having chicks play rock and roll. And I feel like this song is such a. Uh, sort of kicking the ass to those companies who didn't believe in them and show that women can do this and be just as cool as the guys, you know? Um, yeah, I love Susie. I love Susie. All right. Next up, we have um, a record I showed recently, and I said I was probably going to use this in one of these videos because um, I really, really dig this song. It's funny because it's almost like polar opposite to the Susie Quattro song because it's a very uh, misogynistic, <laughs> very macho song. Um, This is uh, Peaches by The Stranglers, uh, the sixth track off of this album, Madison Norvegis, very Latin name, uh, written by Jean Jacques Lernell, Hugh Cornwell, Dave Greenfield, and Jet Black, who are all members of the band, and sort of a very sexually innuendoed um, song about watching girls at the beach looking at their peaches aka their butts um, uh, it was sort of macho parody 
and it was sort of seen as censor bait. Because back in the day, bands sort of realized that, like, bad press is good press, so if the press was la or talking about how they had to censor a song in order to play it on the radio, um, you know, it would make kids want to go buy the records even more because it's like this, ooh, this forbidden thing that I shouldn't have sort of thing, uh, which makes, you know, teenagers want even more. Um, yeah, they performed this on BBC and they had to change like several of the lyrics that talk, because there's like a part in the song where it talks about clitorises and uh, kind of being misogynistic and aggressive towards women. Um, who knows if they purposely did that because they didn't realize it or they kind of knew that it would piss some people off because this was like the height of the women's liberation movement. Um, who knows? I don't, I couldn't really find that much about, you know, band's thoughts on the song or like the inspiration behind it besides it just being a sort of, um, uh, attention grabbing song. Um, so yeah. But it has such a killer beat though. Very groovy. It's almost kind of like funky rock with sort of like this reggae thing. There's no way you can't just like groove to that beat. Last but not least, probably the newest uh, song in this batch. A lot of this stuff is from like the 70s and 80s. Um, this band's kind of an 80s band. Uh, this is one of their more recent albums. Inside Me by the Vaselines. This is the third track off of this album, Sex with an X, written by Eugene Kelly and Francis McKee, the two members of the band. Uh, sort of, in my opinion, talks about like the darker forces we all sort of have in us and sort of blaming it on the devil or whatever dark force you believe in. Uh, to sort of justify bad decisions. Um, but yeah, this was the um, second album the Vaseline's ever released. They've released three so far. The first one was, um, I think, came out in like '88 late 80s, I think, um, called Dum Dum, and uh, the reason I know about the Vaselines is because of Nirvana. Uh, Kurt famously loved this band, he considered them one of his favorite bands, and he, they, Nirvana covered several songs from them from the album, and um, yeah, I just saw this at a record store for really, for really cheap, um, and got it, and I love this album, and they um, released an album their last album 2016-2017. Um, don't have that one, but <laughs> I love this one. I really haven't heard anything from the Vaseline's that I haven't loved. And this one has like an interesting sort of uh, slow bluesy thing to it that I feel like a lot of their other songs don't have. Um, I feel like they're kind of more just straight up like alternative pop rock, I would say. Um, 
This one has like a little bit more edge, I feel, compared to the other songs. But yeah, um, I believe Francis um, was the name that Kurt Cobain chose for his daughter because of Francis McKee and also Francis Farmer um, was also another person that Kurt Cobain really loved and adored. So uh, I sort of believed he chose um, that name for his daughter because of Francis McKee and Francis Farmer. But yeah, such a killer album. You can still find these for super cheap. Um, I think I paid like $12, $15 dollars for this, which is insane. Um, it was still sealed and brand new. I only got it like a year or two ago. But uh, killer album, killer band, anything you pick up from the Vaseline is awesome. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.